Hello everyone, welcome inside the Coach Chris Oliver Show. I'm Chris Wells. Coach will join me in just a few moments. This week we'll take a look back at the Blue Raiders 34-9 win over Point University to improve to 2-0 on the season. In our uh, Student Athlete Spotlight this week, we'll visit with uh, senior JT Lyon and we will preview Lindsey Wilson and Faulkner coming up on Saturday. It's homecoming weekend on the Hill. That kickoff is set for 2.30 p.m. Central Time at Blue Raider Stadium. Again, Faulkner and Lindsey Wilson at 2.30, an hour later than uh, what we normally would kick it off. So 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll have the coverage right here on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network beginning at 1.45 with our pregame show. We're going to step away for a minute. When we come back, we'll visit with LWC head football coach Chris Oliver. This is the Coach Chris Oliver Show on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network. Welcome back to the Coach Chris Oliver Show. Coach now joins me, and Coach, 34-9 uh, win over point. We talked about it in the pregame a bit, uh, how from week one to week two, a lot of coaches say that's where your one of your biggest improvements are during the season. Did you see that improvement? I think in a lot of ways we did. Uh, we sharpened up a lot of the, the things that are controllable for us. Uh, we had fewer uh, pre-snap penalties. We still had one substitution error that we got to get uh, fixed. Uh, we didn't have post-snap penalties. We had some sloppiness in game one. Uh, we didn't have any 15-yarders post-play mm -hmm. post uh, penalties. I thought our guys played a lot smarter. Uh, I, I thought those aspects of the game, those things that can get sloppy early on in the season, I thought we took a step forward. Uh, I think our execution in certain aspects of, of play um, we're a lot better, and then certain aspects we're not there yet. You know, we talked about in the post game our our pass protection and giving our quarterbacks time and getting the ball out of our hands at quarterback, you know, running the the correct routes at receiver, all those things that go into getting the ball out on time. We got to take a step forward there. We didn't take the step forward from week one to week two that you know we expected and that we should have. So I think overall, yeah, we we made big strides from week one to week two, but you know we're, we're far from a finished product, and we got to continue to get better. Is that something that you I, I would think you could show on film that you uh, obviously anytime you go into a film session you, you you're going to show mistakes that the guys make, yeah. but you guys do a really good job of making sure that you you throw in the positives as well because it, ultimately you want to build these guys up. Yeah. And that's the first thing we started off our Sunday team meeting with. You know, we we came in and, and talked about what we did better than week one and, and how we improved. And you know, I encourage those guys on on responding to the challenges. And you know, this has been a team uh, thus far through the off season, through training camp, where I've been really encouraged by w when we bring things to their attention. We treat them like adults. Mm -hmm. We we challenge them on certain things. It's not yelling and screaming. It's not uh, getting down on them. It's it's, it's trying to treat them like adults. Um, and they've responded really well to that type of, of communication, and that's what we want as coaches. You know, we want to lay out the expectation, we want to challenge our guys to meet it, and we want to see guys that want to continue to work to do that. And this group has, has been built in that way, and that's encouraging, and we certainly hope that continues. Um, so, you know, we started off at team meeting, and then, you know, we talked about challenges for this upcoming week, both with our opponent, with, you know, the heat. Uh, you know, as we film this, this is going to be probably the hottest day of the mm -hmm. year uh, for, for our practice that we're going to have this afternoon. Um, so we talked about those things, and we bring it to our attention, and hopefully our guys continue to respond well. How difficult is it as a coach to read that about your team, about understanding what buttons to push, especially as early in the season? It is. And I know you went through went through spring or went through fall camp, but again, uh, until you get some data from actual game, I got to think it's a little bit difficult knowing what type of team this is. Yeah, you're still feeling a lot of things out, and you want to go off of you know your senior leadership and certainly having a big group of seniors helps us and you know every, every team has that different dynamic and it does take time to see how they respond to adversity and, and respond to praise um, but so far you know our guys have done it really well and, and I think we're still growing together but also we've been uh, together a long time <laughs> working on the 2019 season since January not just training camp as well um, so it, it, it takes a while it's a little bit more art and science uh, and you want to find those guys but you know the thing that I think often gets lost and, and where coaches get too much praise uh, it's not all about the coaches pushing the right buttons it's about your internal leadership from your players mm -hmm. and when that is strong that is that is so much more uh, effective I think than hearing it from coaches and coaches want to instill that culture we want to build that leadership 
Uh, but ultimately, when your players take on that ownership, uh, that is a very powerful thing. And I think thus far, you know, I'm encouraged by how this group has done that. And you have six captains, which is, I don't know, have we ever had six captains? No, it's the first is, time. Yeah. yeah. And I remember rewinding back to that KCU game to end a 2018 season. We have one guy out there at the yeah. coin toss because of injuries. How important is to have, I mean, you talked about having that internal leadership, but just, just having guys out there uh, who are playing, I got to think, is, is an important aspect as well. Yeah, you can't overstate the, the importance of leadership, uh, I think, in any athletic team. But I think college football, you talk about just the sheer numbers. You know, you talk about all football teams. Um, you know, college football is uh, it's the biggest rosters you're going to get. In the NFL, you got 53, and uh, you know, at high, most high schools don't approach college sizes for, for most of us. Um, so you have a huge roster mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the spectrum of athletics. So it takes a lot more guys getting into the trenches there, so to speak, with uh, affecting you know the leadership and how the guys respond sure. and do that. So having a bigger group of leaders, whether it's captains, whether it's seniors whether it's guys that are elected to the team leadership council you know we tell our guys you don't have to be all those things to be a leader it's great and being a senior you know you've earned a certain amount of respect we hope uh, but it, it, you don't have to be a captain to be a leader and we want guys who want to take that ownership with them and so far again our guys have been really good about that and it's encouraging the Raiders defeated point 34 to 9 on Saturday. They'll host Faulkner this weekend, which is homecoming weekend. We'll come back in a moment. We'll talk about uh, the point win. We'll get more into the game. Uh, we'll preview Faulkner at the end of this show. We'll also have our student athlete spotlight with JT Lyon. We're going to step away for a couple minutes. We'll come back. This is the Coach Chris Oliver Show on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network. Welcome back to the Chris Oliver Show. Sitting alongside LWC head football coach Chris Oliver, I'm Chris Wells. And coach, let's talk about point. 34 to nine win. Uh, let's talk about your offense for just a moment. I thought you had a, a nice mixture of drives, at least scoring drives. Uh, you started off with a terrific 12 play drive. We don't see too many 12 play mm -hmm. drives in, in Lindsey Wilson football. Had a 12 play drive. You also had a four, a five, an eight, and a four. So it, it was it was a mixture of, of big plays and uh, methodical drives. Yeah, I thought you know, there were a lot of positive spots and bright spots on Saturday for our offense. You know, the, the consistency isn't where we want to be yet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you look at our first down efficiency, it's something we talk about a lot. Uh, throughout the first half, we were we were pretty good. We were approaching 50%. And, you know, as the second half went on through the third quarter, we kind of fell off of that a little bit, played a little bit more behind the sticks. So, you know, there were certainly some good moments. We made some big plays, uh, but we, we need to find more consistency. Uh, but I think there were a lot of good things. And we talked about leading into the game. I mean, the point defense was, was was strong. Uh, that, that's a defense that is going to give some people fits throughout the course of the year. I think their personnel is strong. They're really well coached. Um, so I, I thought we did a good job of kind of settling into the game. We don't want to, you know, settle in. We don't want to take time to do that. But I thought we settled in rather quickly. Um, just got to be more consistent and, and help ourselves out on first down throughout the course of the game. And I think we can continue to, to sustain a few more drives. How do you work on that consistency? Is it during practice or is, do you have to be in a game type atmosphere? Atmosphere to work on that consistency? Well, I think it's both. I mean, everything you do in practice is going to show up on game day, but at the same time, you have to have that exposure on game day to, um, for lack of a better term, the pressure, just being in front of the crowd. Uh, you, you can watch a lot of guys, uh, especially young guys, it's common in athletics. You can watch something happen all week in practice, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the lights come on and the situation gets bigger, and sometimes you get away from that technique. Now, the thing I'll tell you, if you don't do it in practice, you're never going to do it in the game. Right. So you have to do it in practice first, uh, but at the same time, getting those reps under your belt in a game situation is going to allow you to get more and more comfortable and hopefully translate that practice to game day more often. Special teams wise, I really thought your kick unit really stepped forward. Kickoff was, was Hunter Watkins was outstanding in the two attempts that he got. Uh, the coverage, I thought, they their, their starting average field position was the 25 yard line. Yeah. I, I thought that was outstanding. Yeah. Yeah, I thought our kickoff team was, was great. Uh, we had a couple times where we let them just outside of where we wanted to be. And, you know, we don't like to talk about officiating, but uh, we got held a few times, <laughs> um, you know, and, and there's probably some things that we can learn from on that video, but we can't control that. Um, but
but our kickoff team, we, we got off some some holds and, and got off some some uh, rough blocking and did a great job. Our kickoff return put us in a great spot a few times. Uh, so I, I thought the, the special teams game was was strong. Uh, we'll talk about the defense a minute, and I saved it for last for a reason. But uh, you bring up an interesting point about getting off of uh, whether it be a hold or, or just a, a good block. I thought both defensively and special teams did a. You know, you talked about in week one that you don't really know how you're going to tackle because you don't practice tackling yeah. uh, for obvious reasons. But I, I thought for the most part we did a really good job of, of getting free to be able to make some uh, tackles on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. I thought our defense played outstanding and, and you know, we really came to play. We were focused early on and, and focused throughout the course of the game. Uh, you know, They hit a couple big plays in the third quarter to set up a touchdown uh, scoring drive one where our defensive back slipped and you know it was good for us. We, we got some, some young guys, some reps. Mm -hmm. uh, they went in there, they made some great plays, they showed a couple times that they were young guys and that's just part of the process but we were able to get a lot of guys on the field on defense. Uh, I mean our defense played out outstanding. I, I think we, we started off the game with three straight three and outs. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you talk about coming out and setting a tone and you, you're playing against an offense that yeah, they played an outstanding defense week one, and they're probably thinking, hey, we're going to get something going against these guys, playing a little bit different uh, structure and a little bit different level, so to speak. And we came out, we punched them in the mouth. We're really proud of how our guys did. Yeah, the defense was a, they held point scoreless for the first three quarters, had double digit tackles for losses. I mean, anytime you can get that, I mean, yeah. you're, you're well on your way to a good day. Yeah, you know, we've talked about our defensive line is, is a strength for us, and, and certainly we have linebackers as part of our pressures and those things as well. But, you know, it's got to start with the defensive line. And, you know, we, we saw it in spurts in game one. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we had some moments where the, we were really good, had some moments where maybe not as consistent as we wanted. I, I thought in this game, you know, our, our defensive line was, was outstanding. We really showed through and showed that experience and talent. And uh, we hope that that's going to continue to be an advantage for us as we go throughout the course of the year. Lindsey Wilson wins it by a score of 34-9 over point, improves to 2-0 and on the season. Uh, no new poll yet. Uh, actually, it will come out the, uh, next week after this uh, coming weekend's game. Uh, do, do you, uh, just quickly, uh, do you like the fact that the the, the polls are, I know the preseason poll is it is what it is it has to be done do you like the fact that you get two three weeks into a season to kind of see what everybody is before before a new poll comes out well, I think it makes a lot of sense in a lot of different ways especially at, at uh, our level where not every uh, Raider gets to see every team in person or, or even on video and right. those things you know so having a little bit more resume under your belt before that first regular season poll comes out probably makes a lot of sense Faulkner comes to town this coming week. Uh, it's homecoming weekend on the Hill, third straight home game. We'll talk to uh, Coach Oliver about that coming up in a few minutes. But when we come back, we're going to visit with our in our student athlete spotlight. JT Lyon will join me. We'll be back in a couple minutes. This is the Coach Chris Oliver Show on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network. Welcome back to the Coach Chris Oliver Show. I'm Chris Wells. JT Lyon joins us now on our Student Athlete Spotlight. Uh, welcome, JT. Welcome to the show. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. You. Uh, You've kind of had an interesting journey to to this point. You've played behind some a, a lot of great football players, and now you're kind of the man, one of the men on on this uh, defense who had a terrific week this past week against Point. You were one of the leading tacklers. Uh, talk a little bit about how it is coming from the prep squad, which just about everybody has mm -hmm. to do uh, to to this point where you're <clears throat> where you're, you're an everyday starter. For sure. Uh, so coming in my freshman year, like a lot of people, you said comes in on the prep team and. Uh, it's definitely a big transition from playing on high school and coming into preps, but coming in just trying to get better and try to make the team better. And then coming in playing behind people like Trent Mueller, mm -hmm. I was two-time All-American, and just learning as much as I could and trying to play with him and compete with him as much as I can has just made me better and a better player today. What's it like going against the Lindsey Wilson offense? Uh, I know you don't get to go against you, – you, basically you guys go against a lot of the prep stuff now, now that you're in the season. But during uh, spring ball and now you know during fall camp, what's it like going up against uh, that offensive line, Cameron Dukes, Peyton Virality, the receivers who are having a great year so far? What's it like going up against them? It's competitive. You know, always you got to bring your A game because the ones are already, always going out there trying to win, going back and forth with each other. So just trying to make us better and make each other better and our offense has a lot of threats, so just trying to be at our best game so we can compete with them. This guy here, he has to fill out a bio sheet at the beginning of the year. He says he didn't remember what he put on there because that means he wasn't listening to me when I was <laughs> when I, no, I'm just messing with you. But uh, apparently you're a fisherman. Yes. That you, you like to fish. I do enjoy to fish. Okay, so 
a sack, okay, or a five pound bass. Which which is better? I mean, come on now. That's 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 a pretty good question. You got to think about that for a minute. That one's tough. I mean, a five pound bass is a nice fish, <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, I'm going for a sack. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take the sack. It, it's it's you guys had an unbelievable weekend defensively against Point. You had double digits tackles for a loss. Was in the backfield all day long. You, you guys enjoy. I, sometimes it's hard for our staff people to to pick up who got that sack because as soon as there is a sack, you got four or five guys oh, yeah. there celebrating. Well, talk a little bit about what it's like <clears throat> celebrating, whether it's you yeah. who gets the sack or somebody else. What's, what's it like celebrating with your you know, with your brothers? You know, it's always fun out there because I, I love seeing my guys succeed because, I mean, that's when our when someone else succeeds, our team succeeding. So just getting sacks and everyone's flying around, like you said, it's always hard to tell because, I mean, our defense is so fast. We're flying around to the ball and just, we get to go over there and celebrate with our guys. So it's always great. So you're your captain, yes, sir. What's it? What was it like uh, when Coach Oliver told you that you were going to be a captain? What did it mean to you? Uh, it meant a lot to me. You know, it's a big uh, honor, and I was really glad to accept the position. And I was just really honored that he asked me. So, what what does that mean? What do you do? What is a captain on the Lindsey Wilson foot? Because it, it, you guys have a great culture. What, mm -hmm. what what do you? What kind of legacy do you hope to to fulfill with with being a captain? You know, just flying around, having a, just always having great energy, coming out, and focusing on the little stuff, the details all the time. I know everyone talks about. It, but going one no each week, one no every day, one no every chance we get to, because you only get so many opportunities. So you gotta just push, just going one no every every chance you can. And you're one of six captains on this team, yeah. which is unheard of. Uh, what do you guys get together? Do you talk? Do you do you try to, I guess, live that culture? I mean, how, how do you go about? Uh, sharing the the load, so to speak. Oh yeah, we're in a group text message. We we talk to each other all the time. I mean, we always are talking to each other, just trying to push each other. We're texting each other, then texting everyone else too on the team, just trying to push everyone along. Coming into this season, what, what kind of goals did you set for yourself? Uh, goals for me is just coming out here and preparing my be prepared for the season. You know, uh, last year I had a shoulder injury, so just. Making it through the season healthy was one big thing for me. So coming in at peak performance, just being ready as much as possible, and then uh, just being able to be the best leader I can be, just coming in and flying around. I, I think it's sometimes it's not it's hard for people to understand. You, you missed some games last year with that injury. How difficult is it being on the sidelines, uh, knowing that you can't contribute on the field? It's it's pretty tough, you know. It's. It's hard in practice, you're in there seeing everyone grind during the day and you're sitting on the sideline and then when it comes to game time, everyone's having fun out there and you're over there just trying to cheer on a team as much as possible. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you're on the sideline, so just trying to be as positive as possible. You got a birthday coming up. Yes, sir. A couple weeks. Yes. It's on a Saturday. Yes. But we're off. It's the bye week. Yes. Is that is that? Are you disappointed that you don't get to hit somebody on your <laughs> birthday, or, or are you you happy you you kind of get off for the weekend and get to spend it with your family? No, I definitely I would enjoy to play. You know, it's always <laughs> fun coming out here and playing and stuff. But it is nice then again to have it off and be able to spend a little bit of time away, just because it is my birthday. I can spend more time with my family. Hey, congratulations on being selected captain. Congratulations on going one and zero this. Past week. Yes, sir. And best of luck the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's JT Lyon. We'll be back in a minute. This is the Coach Chris Oliver Show on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network. Back to the Coach Oliver Show. Coach uh, JT Lyon, you always send me really good interviews, and, and JT's no, no uh, exception to that. Uh, JT's an interesting story because uh, obviously he's played uh, quite a bit during his time here at Lindsey Wilson. But he's kind of played behind or yep. with uh, Trent Mueller and now had uh, second leading tackler on the team uh, this past weekend. Really, uh, I think that he, he, you can just see how much he has learned throughout his uh, time here at Lindsey Wilson. Yeah, I mean, great young man. And, you know, the, the, there's different paths for everybody of, of a pathway to the field. And, you know, some guys are, are on prep team uh, a, a long time, a few years, and then they, they get that opportunity. Every now and then you get a young guy who comes in and plays right away, but most of them the path is similar to what JT has been where he came in and you know he's on the prep team to start and, and then uh, as you get into that next year you kind of get a few more opportunities and he's a guy that well, he's played a little bit of every position for us 
uh, at linebacker. He, you know, with us being a 3-4, we ask a lot of our linebackers being in different positions. He's played a little bit of everything for mm -hmm. us. Uh, even put his hand down here and there to play a little bit of defensive line, uh, situational type deals. And that was kind of where he got his first start on, on playing. So he's a guy that has always been uh, eager to execute whatever role we've asked him to do. Uh, and, and he's developed into a, 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 to a really, really good football player, but he's a great leader, uh, a great young man, one of our captains, just the type of guy that you, yeah. you root for because you've seen how hard he's had to work to get to uh, the playing time and the things that he's earned. And it's just so fun to watch guys develop like that and, and to be able to root for him. Each week, uh, the coaching staff goes through the, the film and, and, and talk about who the players of the week, big plays, and it's always good when I see a long list and Coach Oliver's hands mean we had a good week. So, yeah. Coach, let's go through that list. All right, here we go. On defense, we had C.J. Dickerson was our player of the week. On offense, uh, Terrell Cole and Josh Lewis. Uh, special teams were uh, Hunter Watkins and Delvon Dunn. Uh, prep offense, Eli Sherrard and Chris Parsons were our prep O players of the week. Uh, prep defense, Trey Cole, Carson Steele, Dontavious Bland, and John Williams. And then prep special teams, John Williams again, and then Darius Yates. Uh, big plays, we had a forced fumble by L.J. Bowman and the recovery by Clay Chastain. Uh, sacks, you know, we had a lot of sacks mm -hmm. and split sacks and uh, things. But Damani Jenkins, Cam Thurman, C.J. Dickerson, Stevie Miller, Ben Kalu, Romy Dukes, JT Lyon, and then Devin Jackson had one on a two-point conversion. It doesn't go as a sack right. in the stat, <laughs> but it was still you know a sack for us internally. Uh, and then Terrell Cole had a big catch on a scramble up the sideline, just a, a big-time catch. He played outstanding. Josh Lewis on his first touchdown, we gave one. He broke it, uh, a couple tackles on the screen, took it to the house. Jalen Boyd for the 51-yard run there in the fourth quarter. Uh, the long kickoff return by the, the entire kickoff return team. Uh, and then Josh Lewis had a, had a really big deep leader block on, on a screen to Jay Godlock that took us down to the two yard line. So a lot of big plays, uh, a lot of things to go around. Uh, sorting out the sacks the other day was, was a, a full time <laughs> job for you guys in the, in the, uh, in the press box. Something uh, we like we, doing. Yeah, we had a lot of guys, <laughs> a lot of guys at the quarterback that was good. Uh, Cameron Dukes was the Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week this week. Uh, he didn't make this list, but you know it's just quarterback gets a lot of numbers, and, and congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Josh and, and Terrell had huge games, and uh, you, really good to see the young guys making plays because uh, you mentioned it before. The, these guys were on prep teams, yeah. and, and it, it's good to see that they – have taken the next step to that level and, and, and we see that year in and year out. Yeah, and, and that's encouraging for the young guys that are that are still yeah. on prep teams. Uh, you know, and they come in and, and, you know, if you're a true freshman in our program right now, there's not a lot of true freshmen that come in and play in our program. Uh, and every now and then there's a few, but there, there's not a lot. Uh, but if, you know, you come in and you're a true freshman right now, you know, you may not be aware that you know, Terrell Cole and, and Josh Lewis and guys like that, Cordarian Trice, that those guys were on the prep team mm -hmm. a year ago. Uh, you don't know that, you know, Cameron Dukes was on the prep team his freshman year. Yeah. So those are things and those are lessons that we can bring to guys' attention and we do that within our program. Uh, we use those examples because we want to tr you know, continue to encourage right. and that's how you continue to strengthen your culture and get those guys to buy into the process. 34-9, Lindsey Wilson defeats Point to move to 2-0 and on the season. Coach, before we preview Faulkner, I want to talk to you just a little bit about the Mid-South Conference. We've seen some really interesting scores through the yeah. first couple of weeks, three weeks uh, of the season if you count uh, that open Opening weekend where there was just one game. Uh, it just goes to show you how deep the Mid-South Conference is, mm -hmm. how there aren't any weeks no. off, uh, even cross divisions. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a fun, fun year. Yeah, I, I think you look at just the results so far and there's a lot of ones that have you scratching your head, but that's based on paper and assumptions from previous years. Right. Uh, and you look at you know some of the programs who have been uh, down for a while, and already a couple of them have big, big wins this year. Um, and you look at some of the programs that have been perennial playoff contenders, and maybe they have some results that are a little closer than, than what you would 
anticipate. Uh, it, it's a great conference, and it's a deep conference, and you hit the nail on the head. There's no weeks off. There's nobody uh, where you can show up and play and just assume, okay, we're going to chalk that one up, and you know we can play okay, and we'll likely get the win. It's not like that in the Mid South Conference, uh, week in and week out. And you know we're kind of the SEC of, of the NAI. Mm -hmm. uh, we play in an area of the country where there's a lot of athletes, uh, and you know everybody who we play and everybody who we don't play on other sides of the conference, you know, always has has at least a few uh, exciting athletes and the guy that you know that receiver that if he gets the ball in his hands watch out that running back that can be a difference maker those DBs that can mm -hmm. you know cover almost anybody right. um, so you know you get that in our conference and, and it's going to be an interesting season and we just got to continue to focus on our process and, and taking care of us. Blue Raiders hosts Faulkner this weekend. Uh, it's a 2.30 p.m. Central Time kickoff because of homecoming and, and the alumni awards that it takes place at 11 a.m. On, uh, on Saturday. So 2.30 p.m. Central Time kickoff from Blue Raiders Stadium. Faulkner comes to town. Coach, it's always a great game. Yeah. Six times we've played Faulkner. All six games have been decided by one score yeah. or less. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's not your typical homecoming game where you kind of search no. out somebody that, that you feel like you, you, you have a real good chance of beating. But not this case. It, it just kind of the way the schedule fell, and this is who we had to play. And, and you know what? It's going to be uh, – I anticipate another great game. Yeah, it'll be a great game. And, yeah, when you have three straight home games and then two home games guaranteed the rest of the year, you don't have a lot of opportunities. <laughs> That's right. To, to pick and choose where, where homecoming falls and those things. Um, you know, the funny thing is you watch them. It's been a couple years since we've played them. It was 2016, and they've had a lot of coaching staff changes since then. New head coach, a lot of new assistant coaches, uh, not, not a lot of holdovers on that staff, if, if any. But they're still built very much the same way. You, you look at their offense in a lot of ways, uh, you know, very athletic, uh, always great at wide receiver. I mean, want to spread you out, play with tempo. I mean, the same things that they've always done. Defense is, you know, big and athletic, runs all over the place, physical. I mean, so they're still built the same way. Uh, we've had some, some real dogfights with them over the years, uh, and I anticipate this is going to be a great football game. Coach, uh, congratulations on week two win, and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Blue Raiders win it by a score of 34-9 over point. Host Faulkner again, 2.30 p.m. Central Time. You can uh, catch the game right here on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network if you're unable to uh, attend, but we hope that you get out there and support this Blue Raider squad. It should be a great weekend uh, as our alumni come back on the hill. That'll do this week's show. Thanks, Coach. I'm Chris Wells. This has been the Coach Chris Oliver Show on the Lindsey Wilson Sports Network.